guys, Mr. Tolly here. I've been um, <clears throat> using my single stage press quite a bit, and it's pretty dirty. I know you couldn't see that, but it's pretty dirty. And it needs a little lubricating in spots and tightening up a few bolts. So I'm going to show you how to, you know, and this is just a very simple Lee. Um, breech lock press. Got the breech lock bushing up here. So the bushing comes out and you can change your dies pretty quick and easy. And I have them. I've been loading 223 on here and 357 Magnum because I use, usually load small quantities. But I'm going to take everything apart and show you that there really isn't much to it. There isn't a whole lot to clean in one of these. Uh, Pop the handle off. I got just a, a half inch wrench, a 9 sixteenths, and a crescent wrench. So we just loosen that one up. There we go. That'll come out. Takes a little work, apparently. <laughs> I've got a crescent wrench too, just because I don't want to run upstairs and get another 916 wrench. But there's uh, down here on the linkage, it's, let's see if I can show you a little better this way. So the linkage, there isn't much to it. This is where your handle goes, and it's just kind of a cam linkage works very simply. There's a bolt here. Let's show this side. There's a bolt here. There's another one up here. And there's a pin. Hmm, it goes through the ram right here. And uh, everything is just dirty. So, here's a quick and easy. The lowdown. I'm taking it apart. These are lock nuts, so you kind of got to thread them all the way off. I'll take this bottom one out first. Oops. You do have to take, on this press I do, maybe I don't have to, but I do. I take the brush and bushing out. <clears throat> Been kind of a long day. I did a double shift today, so bear with me a little bit, please. Now this, this part is two pieces, so when I pull the bolt out, I'll slide it down. That's not on camera, so let's move that. I'll slide it down, and I'll just take the two pieces off. Just like that. Real simple. It doesn't matter which one is on which side, they're exactly the same. And then there's the pin. Now this pin, wipe it off a little, has the center part is thicker than the two ends. So it won't go all the way through. This part will only go in that far. And the rest leaves room for the ram so that you don't bind up on the ram. The ram simply comes right out the top. You didn't see that, did you? Comes right out the top here, push it straight up. And you can see how nasty and dirty that is. Primer channel, everything's just kind of ick. And uh, I could feel that the the lube and stuff on there is just, it's getting pretty uh oh you know grease gets kind of grab the right wrench. It's kind of sticky after after a while. And you can take the press off the bench. I really don't see a need to do it. At least not now.
and we just pull that part off. So it's pretty, it's a really, and this doesn't matter either which way it goes on. It's the same both ways. So it does matter that this part is out. But you'll know that right away because it just won't cycle. And just to, yeah, I'm using a black cloth because I'm embarrassed a little bit about how dirty my press is. We just want to wipe everything down. Pull our primer, the tube off that holds all the primer stuff. To clean down here, I just take this old t-shirt run it through there a bit and that'll get the most of it out and you know some guys will use a solvent in there to make sure they get all the old stuff out now I've probably loaded 20,000 rounds on this press um, and everybody said the the classic aluminum press was not gonna last that long I still don't have any problems with it but I do this about every 5,000 rounds. I'll take it apart and clean it. And I think that's really the main thing that people don't do is clean it. Not like they should anyway. You know, this press is kind of geared toward new reloaders and that sort of thing. But you get the ram out. Make sure, you know, it's going to have some scratches in it. It rides in aluminum. The aluminum will catch stuff. So you want to make sure it's really clean in there. Just wad up a rag a little bit. Go down the channel. This is the channel where the primers come down here and they shoot out this hole. So just kind of go down through there. Make sure it's clean. up through the hole here. I wonder if I got a Q-tip. Look at that. Q-tip. Just kind of, you know, you get your media dust and stuff gets bunched up in there. And, you know, it's not a big deal to do this every 5,000 rounds or so. It doesn't, uh, doesn't really take long. It'll keep it from rusting. It keeps everything lubricated and clean. So there we are. That's in good shape. Down through here, I don't feel anything, which is good. So I just thought I'd show you that a little bit. There's not much to it. Going back together is just the same as the reverse of taking it apart. You make sure every place that moves gets cleaned. Um, when I lubricate, well, I'll come back. As soon as I got all the rest of these parts cleaned up, I'll come back and show you about lubing it. Alright, we're ready to put the press back together. I like to use this for a lube. I've had this for, gosh, I've probably had this can around for 10 years. So dust caked on the top and everything but it's just it's a uh, high temp grease wheel bearing grease basically and uh, it's nothing special but it works really good on the press it stays on the parts doesn't get everywhere um, and it's not gonna hurt you so get a little on your finger If you're afraid of it, use a cleaning patch or something. You're not caking it on here because it just doesn't need to be. And I don't go all the way up the shaft. What? I don't go all the way up the uh, ram. Not so far. Up to the primer hole there. And 
I'll take and make sure there's none stuck in that channel there for the primer discharge. This this hole goes towards this part of the primer and again you can't see me because I'm an idiot. Right here is where your primers go in. They go down here and into the tube. So, try to guide it through. Yeah, look at that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Alright, it's a little dirty. Now I'm going to take it back out and just clean off the top here because some of it will come off. None on the bottom. But I'll go ahead and put a little down there. Now, as long as the snap ring is in there for the print for the seat to, uh, oh, I can't talk today. I can't think. It's been too long a day. As long as the snap ring is in there that holds your shell holder, you're okay. I'm gonna put this on the top screw first, and again, a little bit of this grease goes a long ways. the idea of making some shims because this is just seems a little loose for me well come on huh Night on, not on there. I'm just going to put it, you know, finger tight for the time being. And the next part that has to go in is this shaft, this pin. And you want to make sure that you got some grease on the middle of it. This is a probably one of the most moving parts on the whole press. This and the ram. I'm just going to slide that through that bottom hole of the ram here again, right where it came from, and I'm just going to put just a little rub of grease in there, and some up here, now when you're reloading you don't want to contaminate anything with your oils or greases, that's why you're just you're just using just such a little bitty amount of this and you're wiping off any excess that's why I moved the ram a little bit move the pin in and out a little bit and uh, you know you just wipe off any of that excess we don't ever want to contaminate primers especially so these go on down on the bottom it comes up between here and your bolt goes through just like that get the extra grease off of the bolt and you're tightening the nut on none of this moves it all stays stationary And it's somewhat adjustable, so you can put your um, put the lever a little more comfortable for you. And this is pretty much where I use it. I do run it down 
and I'll run the lever up until it just hits my bench and then back off just a tad and tighten it up just because I don't need the full throw of the lever and really you can see everything is working so much smoother right now and I haven't even got everything tightened up yet tool set to keep down here. I have to do my turret press too, but I've never done that before. When I got it, I just threw some lube on it. Which I didn't really need, but... I'm going to make sure you don't get too tight. Everything should move pretty free. When you're done, you shouldn't have much of that side to side play. <coughs> I took my Hawes Western Marshall out of my cabinet. Now, you have, the only flex in there is in that little bit in that mechanism there, but not a lot. much better. There you go. It's that easy to clean a single stage press. Um, I don't know about other brands. This is a Lee. It is the uh, aluminum breech lock press. And it isn't anything fancy. Usually as I'm going, you know, sometimes you just need to to lubricate things a little bit as you're when you're reloading. I'll just use a little ballast oil or rem oil or something. Just a light oil just to get me by till the next cleaning which doesn't happen too often the grease stays with it pretty well um, and you know keep an eye on it if the grease ever starts oozing out from anywhere again make sure you wipe it off right away I always have a rag fairly close by and I try to keep my press clean I'm going to be making a cover for it so maybe I'll uh, show you how to do that too at some point. I'm not going to get real excited about it. I usually just throw a towel over it. <laughs> anyway, that's all for this one. Uh, I'm going to do another video on cleaning your reloading dies too. Specifically since I have the Lee dies, we'll be going using the Lee. And uh, there you go. We'll get with you next time. Stay safe. And God bless.